You ever felt like you're on the constant hunt? Yeah, you're searching for that one strategy, that one breakthrough that will finally unlock the door to your entrepreneurial success. Now, what if I told you that breakthrough might be hiding in plain sight and it's disguised as something as simple as a quiz? Yeah, hold on, don't go away. You heard me right, a quiz. Now, today we're gonna be diving into the world of innovative lead generation, personalized marketing, and the resilient mindset needed to thrive in the ever-evolving entrepreneurial landscape. And who better to guide this on this journey than the remarkable Ty Goodwin, a luminary in harnessing the power of quizzes for explosive business growth. So stay tuned as we unravel Ty's journey from the classroom to the forefront of digital marketing and how her unique approach has transformed the way entrepreneurs connect with their audience. So whether you're a seasoned entrepreneur or just getting started in your side hustle, this episode is packed with golden nuggets you will not want to miss. You ready to quiz your way to success? Then let's dive in. Hey there, audacious parents. Welcome to the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast, where we're not just about surviving, we're about thriving. If you're tuning in, you're not looking for just another feel-good, pat-on-the-back kind of show. No. You're here because you're ready to disrupt the status quo. You're ready because you're here to challenge your limits and to step out of the comfort zone where we know growth never happens. This is not just your average, let's all be happy with our nine to five lives kind of podcast. We're here to give you actionable strategies. We're here to dive deep into the world of side hustles, digital marketing, and smart income boosting tactics. Why you may ask? Because we're designed for parents like you, parents juggling family expenses, childcare, and the elusive me time. We're not just about making money though, we're about designing a life. A life that you dictate, not one that's been prepackaged in a soul-sucking 9-5 box. So, if you're ready to break free and design a life that aligns with your dreams, design a life that aligns with your family, you're in the white place. The Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. What is up? What is up? What the hell is up, my dark horse entrepreneurs, my fellow entrepreneurs and dream chasers? Welcome to another episode where we dive deep into the essence of what it truly takes to transform your passion into a thriving business. And today, we're not just talking about a strategy. We're exploring a pathway that has been right under your noses. And some of us, our noses are a little bit bigger than others, but either way, it goes often unlooked. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, in the vast ocean that is digital marketing and entrepreneurial wisdom, it is really rare to find a beacon that shines as brightly as our guest does today. I have the absolute pleasure of introducing you to Ty Goodwin. Now, she's a visionary whose journey from the classroom to the pinnacle of marketing innovation, I think is nothing short of inspiring. With over two decades of marketing savvy, Ty has evolved from an award-winning instructional designer and educator to the CEO of that marketing team, an agency dedicated to lifting the burden of marketing from the shoulders of CEOs and business owners who have been juggling it all. Probably you, right? You just got to do it all at the same time. What's her mission, you may ask? Well, her mission is to let leaders lead while her team amplifies their voice to the digital world and in the digital world. But Ty's impact doesn't end there, my friends. As an author of Girlfriend, It's Your Time and co-author of The Profitable Woman's Playbook, her insights have not only graced the pages of her own publications, but have been featured in The Huffington Post, Forbes.com, Money Magazine, and Black Enterprise, just to name a few. And for all the hardworking parents I have tuning in, Ty's journey resonates on a whole nother level. Ty embodies the spirit of parental entrepreneurship, demonstrating that with the right strategies and the right mindset, balancing family and business is not just a dream. It is 100% reality within your reach. Today, we're going to uncover the strategies that have propelled Ty and countless entrepreneurs right to success. The one you're looking for maybe, right? We're talking about lead generation, personalizing your marketing, and building resilience all through the innovative use of quizzes. So whether you're scribbling notes at your kitchen table after the kids have gone to bed or strategizing your next move on your morning commute, 
This episode, my friends, is for you. Let's get ready to turn insights into action. Welcome to a masterclass in entrepreneurial innovation with my friend, Ty Goodwin. All right, we're going to kick this off with the power of quizzes for lead generation. As I mentioned earlier, in the vast ocean that is digital marketing, finding a beacon that guides your audience directly to you can feel like searching for a needle in the proverbial haystack. But what if I told you that needle isn't just lying there, but it's shining brightly waiting for you just to pick it up and pop that balloon of success? That beacon, my fellow entrepreneurs, could very well be a quiz. Now, let's be honest here, I'm not talking about just any quizzes. We're not referring to those, which Harry Potter character are you, or which Disney princess could are you type of quizzes. No, while those are fun, they serve a completely different purpose. We're diving into quizzes designed to engage, designed to educate, and most importantly, designed to convert your audience into leads. And nobody, my friends, does this better than Ty Goodwin. Well, you know, I created this quiz first as a paper-based document. Okay. And I was coaching at the time. And this was a time when everybody was telling everybody to become a coach, right? If yes. you want to be an online, become a coach. And most of my clients were like, they were trying to become coaches, but they actually were hating it. And so I created a quiz called What Type of Entrepreneur Are You? And it was I, my, I used the term bankable brilliance. Okay. And so find your bankable brilliance archetype. You're like, who are you? And um, it helped my clients give themselves permission to not coach, right? Because they're not really coaches. Some people want to be behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Some people want to be trailblazers. They want to be on stage, you know, and so it gave them the breakdown. So, but at the time, Tracy, here's what's interesting. The book was doing phenomenal things for my clients, but I didn't know how to market myself, mm. right? Because I was using it after the fact. And so I went back to a day job. Right. Mm, I got tired. Gosh. I was Facebook rich and profit poor for like five years because people love me on Facebook, but they weren't buying my stuff. And so I ended up going into a day job. But when I left that day job about two and a half years after being there, um, I knew that I needed a list of people to sell mm -hmm. to. And so I took that quiz that I had and I had an old list from two and a half years ago. that had about 20, 2,500 people on it. That's a good list. And I sent those people an, an, an email saying, hey, I got this quiz. Because right, I had automated it at that time. Come on and take this quiz. And within two weeks, I had 500 people back on my email list. It's fascinating, isn't it? Ty took a simple concept, a quiz, and turned it into a lead generation powerhouse. But it doesn't stop there, right? With the right strategy, this approach not only re-engaged her exi existing audience, but also opened the floodgates to new leads eager to learn more about what they uniquely needed as entrepreneurs. I think really the beauty of quizzes lies in their dual power, their dual power of engagement and personalization. They invite your audience to interact with your content, making the experience all about them, all about their needs, all about their challenges and their aspirations. And this isn't just about marketing. It's about having a conversation, a two-way conversation. And in today's digital age, having a meaningful conversation with your audience is pure gold. Now, as Ty so brilliantly showcased earlier, quizzes are more than just a tool for engagement. They're a mirror reflecting the diverse needs and personalities of your audience, of your prospects, allowing you to tailor your offerings and tailor your messages precisely to zero right in there and get in there and get inside their heads and, and find out what it is they need and how you can help them. If you haven't considered quizzes as part of your lead generation strategy, I think now might be the time to start thinking outside the conventional marketing box. You see, because the magic of Ty's approach doesn't end with just creating the quiz. It's about how she harnessed the insights gained from these quizzes to drive her marketing strategies forward. It's about listening. Remember, we talk about this all the time. It's, it's not failure, it's feedback. And when you get that feedback, you use that feedback to benefit your audience. Let's hear more about how Ty not only attracted leads, but turned those opportunities into tangible success. The Dark Horse. The Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. I built my business and then about six months later, I was like, you know, I need more, right? 
And that's when I started playing around with Facebook ads. Okay. And so I had one ad and I had one quiz, four months, 9,000 leads generated. What? Yes. 9,000, uh, 9,000. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. My email list went from 1,700 to over 12,000 people in four months. And then I, that's when I started to understand, oh, now I see why people love ads, mm -hmm. right? Because I didn't go broke. Right. Spent less than a thousand dollars a month doing it, you know, and I, I was able to make money, like real money. Like I was got out of the five thousand dollar a month space, and I was into ten thousand dollar months, and then I was in the twenty thousand dollar months, bringing in those from bringing in those leads and having people to sell to. And so that's how I kind of said, "Oh, well, this is great. Well, now let me do this for other people because I got a go. system." Nice. And and then it just evolved, and now with Chat GPT, I've been able to take that same process. And now use ChatGPT to pull that information in. And it's a really cool system. Like when you go through those prompts, the way it builds and the way it designs and our quizzes are known for being spot on. So we're not talking about your, what Disney princess are you? Right. Or what's your pink aura of the day? Like we're talking about behavior-based quizzes mm -hmm. that give people some real insight um, and real value. And then also you as the entrepreneur, it gives you some real data that you can use to do a better job with your marketing. From paper-based quizzes to leveraging the power of social media ads, Ty's journey illustrates one key point, I, I, probably many more, but let's focus on this one. Innovation combined with genuine engagement leads to remarkable growth. Her strategy wasn't about casting out this wide net and trying to attract everybody. Mm -mm. It was about making each interaction count. It was about ensuring that every lead felt seen and felt understood. It's this personalized approach that sets quizzes apart from every other lead generation method that is out there, in my humble opinion. They're not just a means to an end. They're the beginning of a relationship. A beginning of a relationship where your audience feels valued from the very first click. Now, with Ty's story as our guiding light, it's clear that the path to lead generation is evolving. Quizzes offer a unique opportunity, not just to reach out to your audience, but to truly connect with them, to engage with them, to learn from them, paving the way for deeper and far more meaningful engagement. Now, let's talk about taking those insights and that engagement and building some personalized marketing strategies, for lack of a better phrase. Once again, in the ever evolving landscape of our digital marketing sphere and entrepreneurship as a whole, one truth I think remains constant. The more personalized your approach, the deeper your connection will be with your audience. It's like walking into your favorite local cafe where the barista knows not just your name, but your order too. And usually as they see you coming down, if they got enough time, they see you walking in, they'll go ahead and make it for you. So by the time you get up to the counter, your barista's going, hey, Tracy, here you go, here's your car. You feel them, all right? It's that feeling of being known. That's the power that personalization can bring to your marketing. Ty Goodwin, with her innovative mind, took the power of quizzes beyond just lead generation. She used them to segment her audience to really get to the heart of what they needed and what they wanted. Let's hear how she describes this game-changing strategy. Ty Goodwin is a former um, teacher. I was a classroom teacher in AmeriCorps for a few years, went into the classroom, went into the dark side of corporate America, and then found myself not loving corporate America at all and became an entrepreneur. For a long time, I launched while working. So I had the full-time day job and the part-time business. And I am so grateful at this point, I've been in my own business full-time for six years, nice. longer than I've held any day job ever. And our niche and our specialty has been helping people generate leads, which is like the biggest marketing problem that most businesses face. How do I get more leads? How do I get more clients? And we've got a really special way of doing that using quizzes to generate leads, quality leads and even to sell some products on a back end. And so that's the, the, the quick end of how I got from classroom teacher to where I am today. Um, and um, I love what I do. I love who I get to do it for. 
And um, as crazy as this whole online marketing space is, um, one, one of the things that I'm hoping people take away from this is that it is possible for you to find your lane and thrive in it. Full transparency, in the beginning, there was a little bit of that ego, right? Because it's my skill and it's this, this and that. And yeah, I think everybody goes to that because what the machine is going to do what I can do. Yeah. But the reality of it is that if you're really smart about it, you know that there are certain things that it needs to have for the input. Like you said, there are certain things that were in it and it is part of my background. I'm, I have a master's degree in instructional design for online learning. Yeah. So I'm pulling that. I took a, I used to work on wall for a Wall Street company and we had to create exams for people who were stockbrokers. Okay. Right? So I spent a whole week, like 40 hours learning how to create legally defensible questions for exam. So I've got all of this experience that comes into me bringing those prompts in mm -hmm. that you know, regular Joe Blow on Fiverr who says, oh, I'm going to you know, build you a quiz with these questions. Yeah. It's, there's going to be some difference there and there should be. And that's why we use the gifts and the talents that we have right to to turn that into a, a solution for people and so that's what that comes from but once i realized because we got that down to a science right when people mm -hmm. come in this is what we do and so it was great to be able to put that into the system and we tested it a number of times to see okay is it going to get close to what we do and it does it gets close however exactly always that that human nuance and that human dialogue that because i've spent years interviewing experts and pulling their knowledge out of them i know how to even pull it further out than what chat gpt could do mm -hmm. so yeah. that that little extra bump that we get when we work with people one-on-one -on -one. but yeah it's fascinating and it's exciting uh, yeah that's the beautiful thing too so a lot of people say i want a quiz and what we actually say is no what you want is a quiz funnel mm -hmm. like you want the whole system because the beautiful thing about once you ask these great questions and you get this data is now you get to personalize the messaging that you do and so you've got to have it attached to an email platform in the back end and so that email platform allows you to tag and segment your people so that why they're there we had a client that was in e-commerce she had a list of 32,000 people had no idea why they were on her list because she accumulated them over so many years. Sure. And so she was able to use a quiz to now segment say, oh, these people are here because they need this. And these people are still here because they want this. And these people are over here because they're in group C. And so now when she's doing her marketing, she's not sending the same generic message to every single person, which is a mistake to do. Yeah. You have a general newsletter, but when you're trying to solve someone's problem, the best example I can give, Tracy, is I work with a lot of health coaches in the wellness space. And the way, let's say you're a weight loss coach, the way you talk to a new mom who's trying to get rid of her baby fat Mm -hmm. is very different than the way you talk to a woman over 50, just divorced, getting ready to be an empty nester, who's trying to lose weight to go to her 30-year class reunion. Amen. Right? Yeah, that's a way different <laughs> so, message. Exactly. Different budgets, different yeah. time, different you know opportunities. And so if you try to market to them the same way, somebody's going to be annoyed with you, right? Yeah. Because you're going to be talking about baby weight and breastfeeding and all that kind of stuff and this other person is going through menopause and all that so, <laughs> you're like that's so 20 years ago <laughs> exactly so you, you you can use your quizzes to segment your audience so that you're getting what we say is the the right content and the right offers to the right people at the right time the dark horse the dark horse entrepreneur podcast ty's approach illustrates a crucial aspect of modern marketing understanding not just who your audience is but also where they are in their journey. You see, by segmenting her audience through quizzes, Ty was able to tailor her marketing message, making each communication feel personal, making each communication feel relevant, as well as feeling timely to the person that was receiving it. The takeaway from Ty's experience, I think is clear here. Personalization is not just a buzzword. It's a necessity in today's crowded digital marketplace. As you think over your own business, whether you're in the middle of it, at the tail end of it, or just starting it, I want you to consider how you can leverage quizzes or other tools to segment your audience and personalize your marketing efforts. Remember, in a world where everyone is talking, the key to being heard is to speak directly to those that are listening. <laughs> yeah, you feel me? Okay. Now, embarking on an entrepreneurial journey, I think 
It's quite akin to setting sail out on uncharted waters, and I mentioned this in the last episode. It's thrilling, yes, 100% very thrilling, but it's fraught with challenges. Challenges that will test your mettle at every turn. What's the compass that guides entrepreneurs through all these tumultuous seas? I think it's resilience and mindset. Without them, it's easy to lose your direction the minute the storm hits. Heck, the minute you get that first little swell that rocks your boat, like, oh my God, what am I doing? Ty Goodwin is a beacon for many in the entrepreneurial realm. She understands the critical role of resilience and mindset probably far better than most. Her journey, I think, could be a testament to the power of perseverance and the right mindset. Let's dive a little bit into her insights on these pivotal aspects. It's a trade-off, and but for me, it's worth it. For some people, it may not be worth it, and that's fine. For some people, like keep your day job as long as you want and build that passion-based business on the side. Yeah. No, and that's fine too. There is no right or wrong. You mentioned something earlier and it triggered me to think about how all people always want a black or white decision. There's the only way to do this is this way and yes. you have have to do this. I remember when I first started, I was launching while working. I had the full-time job and a part-time business. I called myself an employed preneur back then. <laughs> there you right? go. <laughs> and I had someone say, you're not a real entrepreneur until you have payroll. And I remember feeling, oh my gosh, maybe I'm not. And I think a lot of people will feel that way because you're not a full-time entrepreneur. Sure. But the reality of it is there's more than one way to skin this cat. Yeah. No, hundred percent. So, yeah. And so just you need to authentically find your lane. Yeah. Take your time finding your lane and explore your lane and love to learn to love that lane. And because I think it's for me and what I've learned after all these years is more about the journey, right? Than just the destination. That journey is so important for us to take too. Now Ty's narrative brings to light a crucial lesson. Let's think about this for a second. And it's a crucial lesson for all of us in the entrepreneurial sphere. Success isn't just about having the right strategy. Success, my friends, is not about just having the right tools. It's about having the resilience to keep going even when the results are not immediately visible. Hmm? Think about that. Let that sink in there for a second. And it's about maintaining that growth mindset, one that sees failures not as setbacks, but as setups for comebacks, or maybe just stepping stones so that you can take that next step forward. Now, let's draw from Ty's experiences, shall we? It's evident that resilience and a positive mindset are not just desirable traits, but essential ones for anyone looking to navigate the entrepreneurial journey and anyone especially looking to navigate the entrepreneurial journey successfully i mean trust me i've had my share of setbacks but each and every one of them taught me a lesson each and every one of them made me stronger and made me push closer to my goals remember the path to success is paved with perseverance keep pushing forward and let your resilient spirit be your guide now Let's talk about making the decision of being an entrepreneur. Because I think the leap into entrepreneurship is more than a single step. It is a giant, life-altering jump into the deep end of the pool. A life-altering bound forward. It's a moment, a decision that separates dreamers from doers. A moment where you stand on the precipice of what is and what could be and what if and could I do it. Right, you're standing right on that edge. But what does it truly mean to make that decision, to answer those questions, and to finally call yourself an entrepreneur? Oh, yeah. Well, Tide Goodwin, being our beacon of wisdom in the entrepreneurial world, knows all too well the weight and the exhilaration of this very decision. Her choice to embrace entrepreneurship has led her on an incredible journey of growth, challenge, and success. Let's hear Ty reflect on that critical decision and its impact. Yeah, because there's a difference between somebody who says, I want to use this skill to make money uh -huh. and I want to be an entrepreneur. And there's a big difference between those two. And what I've realized is that the people that say, I want to use this skill to make money, they really want to be freelancers, right? Mm -hmm. They want the order to come down and they do the order and that's it which is very different from the entrepreneur that says, okay, I need to have a problem that I solve for people. 
I need to market and build an audience. Like I, I already, I don't need to market. My work is just good enough on its own. And I'm like, have you ever heard of a little company called like Google or mm -hmm. Amazon or McDonald's? Got billions of customers. And guess what they still do every single day? They market their business. Matter of fact, <laughs> they have entire departments and people who spend 40 plus hours a week, every single week doing nothing but marketing. What makes me, and I'm going to say me just to put myself in a situation because that's where I was. What makes me think that I don't need to learn how to market. And what I realized was if you're not thinking like an entrepreneur, you're thinking like, oh, I just want to get a little bit of business. I just, mm -hmm. want to be that, you know, I just want to make a little bit of money. And that's very different from somebody who realizes, hey, no, I need to make decisions based on who's willing and able to pay me. Mm -hmm. I need to make decisions based on what it's my job to get in front of more people. You see? The Dark Horse, the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. Ty's journey illustrates the transformative power of making the decision to be an entrepreneur. It's not about leaving a job or starting a business. It's about embracing the mindset of growth, embracing the mindset of responsibility and that relentless pursuit of your dream. Everything you dream, desire, deserve, your vista vision as we've talked about in past episodes. This decision, or let's say the decision to step into the world of entrepreneurship really, if you think about it, is monumental. It's a commitment to facing challenges head on, to learning every day, and to growing just as often. Ty Goodwin's story, I wanted to be a testament to where that decision, when you make it, can lead you to the realms of possibility you may never have even imagined. I urge you to take a moment and to reflect on your own decision to embark on this entrepreneurial journey. Because after all, my friends, it's the first step in a journey of a thousand miles. It's not going to happen overnight. You've got to take all those steps. You've got to walk all those miles. But it is the step that sets the direction for everything else that will follow and everything else that you dream, desire, and deserve. Now, as we start to near the end of today's journey together, let's take a moment and jump into our cherished tradition here at the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast our Whiskered Wisdom section. This is where we distill the essence of our conversation down into a single nugget of wisdom that you can carry forward on your entrepreneurial path. If you remember nothing else about our conversation today, I want you to remember what I'm about to share with you and the name Ty Goodwin. Today's wisdom comes straight from the heart of our insightful discussion with Ty Goodwin. It's about making that pivotal decision to become an entrepreneur, a decision that's less about stepping away from something and more about stepping towards your dreams, more about stepping towards your desires, towards your aspirations, towards everything you have been thinking about. And here's the golden nugget, a quote from Ty that I hope will resonate with you as much as it did with me. The leap into entrepreneurship is not just a step. It's a decision that says, I am ready to embrace the challenges, to learn, to grow, and to truly make an impact. But for the sake of, I'm not that kind of person. I want to help as many people as I can. I want people to get this. And if it's going to help them, great. Um, and I really believe that this have to go around for everybody. So it's not going to change who yeah. I am, what my value is. This piece of whiskered wisdom isn't just about entrepreneurship, my friends. I think it's really a life lesson. It reminds us that every single change begins with a decision. Every single change begins with a commitment to not just endure, but to thrive amidst the uncertainties. And they're everywhere, right? We don't know what tomorrow brings when it comes to inflation, to gas prices, to anything in a haul. Is tomorrow even guaranteed? Hmm? Nope, that's uncertain as well. But I want this to be your call to action. I wanted to urge you and all of us to not just dream, but to decisively act on those dreams. Think successfully and take action. You feel me? Okay. I want you to ponder this wisdom. Really just take a moment today. If not right now, you can hit pause and do it right now. But I want you to ponder how you can apply this decisive action-oriented mindset, not only in your business, but also in every other aspect of your life and your relationships and your finances, everything. 
Remember, the most extraordinary journeys all start with one decisive step. Yeah. My dad used to have the same. He used to say, I pay the cost to be the boss. And I don't think we see that. And I was there. I was in those corporate jobs where you just don't like your boss. You don't like your company. And you're from where you come from. And I just, I'm going to, I'm going to have my own business. I'm going to be my own boss. Not really realizing what that statement means to mm -hmm. be your own boss. Um, because now you're the one that's got to do the taxes. You're the one that's got to do the hiring. If you're going to add people to your team, you're the one that's got to make sure the invoices are paid. You're, there's just so many things. And so people don't realize that. And they literally think that when I have my own business, I'm going to have all this free time. And I'm like, where and when? Right. For the first five years, you're everything in a lot of these businesses. And that means you've got to do everything. I, but I gladly, to be quite honest, I gladly swap the 50 plus hours I was working as a salaried employee, mm -hmm. All right, actually 70 when you think of 60 to 70 hours when you think of commute time. Commute time, yes, exactly. I gladly swapped that for 50 hours of being my own boss because I'm now I'm doing what I love to do. I'm in my zone of genius. Yes, there's some learning. Yes, there's some things that, oh my gosh, I don't want to have to do this forever. But I would gladly swap that off because of the other benefits. Like on my calendar, every day at two o'clock is nap time. Seriously, I eat lunch and I take a nap. That's awesome. And, and every Wednesday, yeah, and every Wednesday, I don't see clients because I'm, I'm an introvert, mm -hmm. love teaching, right? love speaking, but I'm an introvert. So I can only do people two days in a row. <laughs> As we draw the curtains on today's episode, I want to take a moment to reflect on the incredible insights shared by Ty Goodwin. From the transformative power of quizzes in lead generation to the art of personalized marketing strategies, Ty has illuminated paths less traveled on the entrepreneurial journey. She's illuminated paths that others have traveled, but not everyone is aware of. And I wanted to share those with you today. I wanted to share her wisdom with you today. We delved into the essence of resilience and the mindset required to navigate the entrepreneurial seas and the profound impact of making that decisive step, that decisive leap, that bound forward into entrepreneurship. I want Ty's journey and her wisdom to serve as a beacon, to serve as a guiding light, guiding us through the complexities of building and nurturing our ventures, however small or big they may be. But remember, knowledge without action is like a book never read. I encourage you, my fellow dark horses, to take the lessons learned here today and put them into action. Embrace the challenges, personalize your approach, and let your resilience be your North Star. And hey, if Ty's story has sparked a fire in you, I urge you to reach out to her, explore farther. You can find out more about Ty Goodwin and her revolutionary approach to marketing at the link below down in the show notes. Dive into the world that she's crafted for entrepreneurs like us. I've dived in and I've loved every step of it and discover tools that can elevate your business to entirely new Heights. And for those ready to take a bold step forward, side hustling, I got something special for you myself, the Side Hustler's Blueprint. This is your guide to navigating the waters of entrepreneurship, of making entrepreneurship more than just your side hustle, but maybe your full-time hustle. This treasure trove is designed to help you to avoid common pitfalls and stride confidently towards success. And getting access is even simpler than the words I just spoke. All you need to do is text the word BLUEPRINT, B-L-U-E-P-R-I-N-T, to 484-514-5323, and you will unlock instant access to this exclusive audio series. You won't find it anywhere else. It's time to turn those dreams into reality, my friends, and the Side Hustlers Blueprint could be the key you've been looking for. Thank you for joining me here on this journey today. Remember, the vast race of life, being a dark horse isn't about coming from behind. It's about blazing your own trail and proving that with determination, resilience, and the right strategies, any damn thing is possible. Until next time, my friends, keep dreaming, keep driving, and keep thriving. Go make your mark. Think successfully and take action. Hey, my Dark Horse Entrepreneur parents, thanks for tuning in. If this episode struck a chord, share it with a fellow parent hustler. Let's grow our tribe that thrives, not just survives. 
For more insights and a community that totally gets it, join our Facebook group at www.darkhorseschooling.com backslash tribe. Think successfully and take action.